We're Butler and Khan of Butler Khan, and we'll talk today about a motorcycle accident settlement that our firm was able to obtain for a client well above the insurance limits. Yep, so today uh, we're talking about a motorcycle wreck, as Jeb said. Uh, our client, uh, Mike Johnson, was riding a, a motorcycle on Moreland Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you've uh, ever driven on Moreland, you know that it can be kind of a crazy road to navigate. Uh, so our client was driving down a busy stretch of Moreland down by uh, Little Five Points when another car made a left turn without uh, any warning right in front of him. So there was nothing he can do to slow down or avoid the collision. And so he hit the car and was catapulted uh, into the, the pavement and flew through the air, um, you know, probably 10 or 15 feet, landed on his hands so his hands were degloved meaning he lost all the skin and tissue on the palms of his hands and then broke his tibia. Um, he was able to get up and kind of hobble off to the side of the road before the paramedics came. But uh, while that was happening, the, the driver that struck him fled the scene. Um, and so we're left with catastrophic injuries and no driver. Uh, the drawing, as you, as you talk behind us, we've got Skyhaven Road in Moreland and the Atfall driver coming into it, trying to make that left, and pulls out in front of our client uh, on his motorcycle. That's okay. right. Yeah. You want to show the video? Yeah, let's do it. So up here, um, let me close this out. We had um, some video from the collision that would, you know, makes always makes a big difference in a case like this. And what you'll see here is um, like the very end of the collision sequence. So sort of off camera to the right, the Edfall driver comes out, and our client on the motorcycle can't avoid the Edfall driver hits and vaults over. So what you'll see is not the collision itself, but just our client like flying down the roadway. Man, if I hit the play button. So there you go. Let's try it again. And you can see how, uh, as Matt talked about, his hands were all torn up and he broke his leg. Um, in that collision. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that we're able to know all this and, and get this video is due to some high quality witness work uh, that Jeb will talk about. Jeb got out there and spoke to the witnesses and businesses, and I'll let him touch on that. You know, in any case we have, we think witness work is really important. Um, we find that a lot of lawyers, for whatever reason, are like reluctant to get out of their chairs. Like, they'll sit there and like viciously pound the keyboard all day and send me an email and file big briefs. But when it comes to like getting out and meeting with the witnesses, they just don't want to do it. Uh, but we think that's important, so we do. Um, and in this case, you know, that involved, as it has in others, going to establishment to establishment and like, hey man, have you got any video? And there was, I think it was the Zesto. That's right, yeah. It was like what the third trial, we found one that had some video. Um, and then ended up talking with some witnesses that helped us figure out sort of who was at fault, uh, which I think Lance will talk about. Sure. So as I said earlier, the driver hit and ran, so we're dealing with an unknown defendant, which typically means you're limited to recovering whatever insurance you cut, have yourself. We call that underinsured or uninsured motorist coverage. Uh, but thanks to the witnesses, uh, we were able to, the, or the witness work, we were able to find a witness who had actually written down the license plate, which helped us track down the driver and identify another pot of money to go after through another insurance policy. Um, now, now this, the witness work and the Jeb's getting the video was really helpful because we had two big obstacles in this case. One was identifying the driver, and then two was proving that he was at fault. Um, and we'll look at a picture of the bike uh, in a second, but in the police report, the investigating officer noted that uh, the motorcycle was actually not street legal. It was a, a dirt bike, and so the report kept referring to our client's motorcycle as a dirt bike, which is illegal to drive on Atlanta streets. Um, so we were able to identify the AFOL driver, get another pot of money to go after, get another, a defendant to sue, uh, and then we were able to have this video to show that it really didn't matter 
that our client was on a street legal or illegal motorcycle, there was nothing he could have done to avoid it and it would have been the same result whether it was a dirt bike or a motorcycle. Yeah, let's see if we can pull those pictures up. I thought I had them for you. Here we go. <coughs> So here's uh, our client on the side of the road after the collision. And sometimes you can just swipe. What are we looking at here? I guess he's being loaded into the ambulance. And I'll just say while this is up, it was interesting because the police report kept saying that our client had minor injuries, but you don't get strapped into uh, one of these gurneys when you only have minor injuries. And we know that he had broken his tibia and had his hands degloved. So it's <laughs> with an x-ray, it's like your leg is broke. Yeah. You know, it ain't minor. So it's helpful to have the body camera footage to, to prove that you know that not everything that's in the police report is accurate. And here's, I suppose, the bike after the collision. Which it, you can see is completely mangled from the, the collision. Yeah. So in, in a case like this, right, it's, it's not after we work it up, it's no longer really a question who's at fault. And the damages, that is to say what was lost is serious. Um, so then, you know, once you've got the case looking right, the problem becomes uh, availability of funds. And this is a, a problem in a lot of personal injury cases where damages are, are serious, where injuries are real and substantial, like a lot of what we handle. Uh, so we confront this problem a lot. And here, the insurance policy at issue provided only $25,000 in coverage. Well, that's well and good, but our guy's injuries really are worth more than that. His medical bills were big. His pain and suffering was big. All he had to go through, the changes to his life were significant. Um, so in a certain situation like that, you know, we have to give the insurance company the opportunity to settle within the policy limits. But they need to do certain things right if they want to do that. And one of the things that we think any good lawyer ought to do, at least in a case like this, is for the insurer to provide sworn testimony in writing, that is an affidavit, saying that this is all of the um, insurance that there is. And here they just failed to do that, um, at least not within the time they were supposed to. So what that meant is that um, we were able to leverage that using some sort of Georgia law uh, and obtain some compensation for our client that was a little more fair, I mean, that fit his injury. So we ended up recovering $125,000 in the motorcycle accident uh, which was five times the available insurance. So we were, we were pleased with that, and that's all well and good, but the important thing is that our client be pleased. Um, this actually wasn't from our client, but his mom, uh, which I like even better, his mom left us a nice Google review saying it would have been a blessing in the time of chaos. And that's not often been said about me, but I really appreciate it here. <laughs>